That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid brought to you by Canada. That's right, the entire nation of Canada. You fail as a country, and I'm going to tell you why. A woman was forced to close her business in Canada after refusing to wax a man's genitals. No, I'm not making this story up. This is a real thing. She runs a, a shop where they do waxings of some sort. I'm not going to pretend to know a whole lot about the subject matter here, but I do understand the legal hoopla going on afterwards. So this is reporting from the Daily Wire. A Brazilian immigrant living in Canada was forced to close up her small business after refusing to wax the male genitals of a transgender LGBT activist, Jessica Yaniv, formerly known as Jonathan Yaniv. Citing discrimination based on gender identity, Yaniv filed a complaint with the British Columbia Human Rights Tribunal seeking financial restitution. The activist has filed complaints against 15 other uh, as aestheticians, I assume that's waxing people, uh, <laughs> as aestheticians with the tribunal claiming their gender identity discrimination as well. The Daily Wire reported last year, it was not until Wednesday, however, that Yaniv's identity was allowed to be disclosed. So what I find really interesting about this is that apparently sexual discrimination is perfectly okay, but gender identity discrimination is not. Because based on the way that I'm reading it, based on the explanation here, the rationale for not waxing this man's boys was that she was saying, that's a dude, this is a woman shop specifically for women. And had she said that, and this was a heterosexual male, a cisgender heterosexual male that just walks in and says, uh, yeah, I'd like to have my boys done, she would be allowed to say no, and then that would be the end of it. So they're allowing for sexual discrimination, which, by the way, I don't think I'm, I'm using that in the normal sense, not the legal sense. In other words, she is discriminating against giving that service to a man. So that's what's going on here. That would have been okay. But just because the man says, no, I am a woman, I just happen to have all the stuff, and he does still have all his stuff intact, that you have to wax me, or else I'm going to bring you before this tribunal. And the tribunal said, yeah, that's, that's gender identity discrimination. Actually, it's not. Because here's the thing. And granted, I don't know this woman personally. I don't know how she would have reacted to this. But if a woman came in dressed as a man, and this was somebody that considers themselves a, a trans guy, then would she still do the procedure on them? Because I can test that if she did, then she is not discriminating against trans people. She is discriminating against people whose sex happens to be male which, by the way, is okay in this situation. Like I've said, not all discrimination is bad. If you see two people come up to your doorstep at 2 a.m., one of them happens to be a Girl Scout, and the other one happens to be a guy wearing a hockey mask with a chainsaw, I would hope that you have enough common sense to discriminate against the guy with the chainsaw and let the Girl Scout, the scared Girl Scout, in. Like, that's a discrimination, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily automatically bad. And so this is one of those cases where sexual discrimination is appropriate, just like it would be if you're going to the bathroom or you're in a high school gym class. That is a part, that is one example of where sexual discrimination is acceptable because this is a woman that does that area of the body and doesn't want to do it for a man because she doesn't want to touch a strange man's stuff. And so if she would do this for a woman that is a trans person, then she's not discriminating against trans people at all. She's merely saying, no, I won't do it if you're a guy. And so this is what's so significant about the way that this is legally being phrased. They are saying whatever the person identifies as. That's what's important. 
whatever the person says that they are, you have to treat it as though that's what they really are. You have to engage in this disillusion that a person is all of a sudden a woman just because he puts on a dress and heels. Which, by the way, I find incredibly offensive to women, suggesting that, oh, there's nothing more to being a woman than wearing a dress and high heels. Or wearing makeup. Because if you're saying that anybody that does that is a woman, you're saying, well, that's really all a woman is. Somebody that wears these particular things, which ironically is falling into a stereotype. It's a different stereotype, but it's a stereotype nonetheless. And so they're saying the female stereotype of what you wear, that's what's actually more important. The science doesn't matter. How you feel is what matters. Now, I can actually give a story here that I think is very relevant, but I'm hesitant to give it just because it's very personal and frankly a little embarrassing, but I think that the story merits it, so I'm going to get a little bit more personal and, and frankly a little more detailed than I want to. But here it goes. For those of you who aren't aware, I had testicular cancer. And that's obviously in a very sensitive area. And I had a number of medical professionals and, and doctors have to, you know, run tests and, and do operations and work on that area because that's where my cancer was. And I'm not going to go into much graphic detail, but sometimes they were women. And even though I was literally dying of cancer, if I had had any female medical professional say, no, don't really want to do that because of the nature of it, we'll get a guy or we'll get somebody else. Honestly, it wouldn't have bothered me. Not at all. Just wouldn't. And that's a, an actual emergency situation where my life was in jeopardy. And if they said, we're going to have to wait a few days to run this test because the person, the only person we have here that does that is a woman and she doesn't want to, you know, handle that part. And I would have said, okay, that's, that's fine. That's how much I believe in this. But this is a guy that is saying, no, I will use the blunt force of law to force women to fondle my junk and the law will back me up on it. And the crazy thing is they actually did. They said, unless you are all over this man's area, then you're out. How insane is that? This is a guy who has done this 15 times, as the article just pointed out. So obviously, this is somebody who is just maliciously trying to force women to touch his junk. That's all this is about. I don't know if it's because he gets his jollies off that way, or he's doing it just to make a political statement, but either way, he's doing this maliciously. He's obviously going around finding different places, because I don't know about you, but when I get a haircutting place... I'm If I get a bad haircut, I go somewhere else, sure. But I don't go all around the place and start seeking out new places to get my haircut or new places to get my oil changed. And the average person doesn't either. This is a guy that is specifically going around to different places trying to find somebody that will refuse him service and then legally force them into doing what he wants them to do. That is a crazy person right there. We saw the same thing with the, the cakes, with the gay bakeries. I'm sorry, the, the, the gay weddings. That they were going around to several different bakeries waiting for someone to tell them they would not design a wedding cake and then all of a sudden decided we would do that. In the case of the Oregon couple, the bakery in Oregon where the, they wouldn't make a wedding cake for the lesbian couple. That case took over three years and the lesbian couple that was engaged still hadn't got married. It wasn't about the cake. They were specifically seeking out somebody that they could force to make them do what they wanted to as a political statement. And the same thing is going on here. I do not understand that. For example, if I walked into a restaurant and the person said, get out of here, you're a Christian, I don't like Christians. Or if I was wearing a, a conservative shirt of some kind, get out of here, I don't like conservatives. You know, I don't like it, but I also don't want to give that person my business. I don't understand the mentality of somebody that wants to force somebody against their will to provide them some kind of good or service. I just don't get it. 
I might think that they're crazy for not doing that. I might think that it's strange that they wanted to turn down my business. I might even get upset about it. But I don't want to force them to do it if they don't want to. And so it's just so patently absurd to me that they do this. And by the way, this part of the story I legitimately thought was a hoax. And apparently I'm not the only one because Steven Crowder expressed essentially the exact same thing. And, and luckily he assembled these pictures on Twitter. So it actually saved me the trouble. So thanks, Steven Crowder. I appreciate it. If you haven't checked out his videos on YouTube, be sure to do that. He's really good, really funny. But anyway, Steven Crowder came across this and he had the same reaction that I did to, to, to when he first heard this. He was like, uh, this sounds a little too convenient. Also, it almost sounds like somebody made this up. But this same person, this activist that is trying to make women touch him in that area and other women in the shop, presumably, that are there see that, even though believe if this were some conservative, for sure, walking in and saying, no, 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 you must wax that area and, you know, you have to handle that, they would call that guy a pervert. And by the way, would be correct in doing so. This same person, if you didn't think he was a pervert before, this pretty much sums it up. So this is a ad for an event that he put together and ran. Now I want you to look at what it is. This is a swimming event, so a pool party essentially. Registration is open to youth ages 12 through 24 for participant privacy and safety. Parents and or caregivers are not permitted in the event. And then there will be no access. Once you're left the event, you may not re-enter. Hmm. Is anybody else's spidey senses tingling over this? First of all, registration is 12 to 24. So that seems like a weird age cutoff. Nobody over the age of 24 is allowed. And no parents or caregivers at all permitted inside the premises Oh, and by the way, once you've left, you can't come back. So in other words, if something happens that make you un made you uncomfortable and you go to get help or something like that, you're not allowed back in. Does this really not strike you as something that is, first of all, incredibly creepy that a man, yeah, I mean, he thinks he's a woman, but a man is running a topless uh, event that for people that are under the age of 18 all the way down to 12. And he's specifically saying, Oh, and by the way, there are no parents allowed. Yeah. Okay. Here's another tweet by the same person in reference to this. I'll present, I'll be presenting on how we need an LBGTQ plus all body swim for ages 12 plus. I'll see you there. Okay. And if that wasn't creepy enough, another tweet, because I am requesting that we have an all-body swim here with allowance for people ages 12 plus to go topless if they dish as allowed in law. So this is the same person, the same guy, that's saying, yeah, let your 12-year-old daughters come to my pool party and they can swim topless and no parents allowed. But in case that's not enough, in case you're still like, I don't know if the guy's really... a you know, maybe you're a social justice warrior type, something like that. And maybe you're saying, well, yeah, but um, this guy, he's he's a trans woman, so he's only attracted to men anyway. It's not like he would be aroused or anything. Now, I think you're insanely gullible if you actually believe that. But just in case that was where you were, just in case you're a social justice warrior just watching the show to hear the other side, here's another tweet. And this one is pinned on the top of their profile. One proud lesbian. I'll never give up fighting for human rights equality. Hmm. So this dude considers himself a woman and a lesbian, which would mean what? That he is attracted to women. I Even if I... To, to the social justice warrior watching this, if you had a daughter and you had no problem with homosexuality at all, you thought that it was perfectly fine and, and there's nothing in the world wrong with it, would you let your 12-year-old daughter go to a lesbian's house at a pool party and let her walk around topless at the lesbian's event? 
I would hope that you would have enough sense to say no. This is something somebody that is proclaiming, yes, I am attracted to women. And by the way, I'm going to use the force of law to force women to wax my area. You know, wax my organs down there, my genitals. And then is also saying, oh yeah, and uh, all your 12-year-old daughters, have them come over to my place and we'll have a topless pool party. This is one of the creepiest things I have ever heard of. And it does go to show that Canada has absolutely lost its mind ruling in favor of this person. This is a very sick, disturbed individual. And the fact that Canada's legal system is on his side and helping him get what he wants and making this poor innocent bystander close down her business because she didn't want to touch a strange man's area. Canada has absolutely lost its mind. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.